that was my brother. We did a lot of a lot of the shit that I'm doing now. If it wasn't for cash, I wouldn't be able to do it. And mind you, I've been around some big names in my city. And ain't none of them did what Cash did for me. You feel me? Like, we was gone. Like, that's all I, like, that's the only way I can sit there and think of it. Like, every time I come back to it, I, we was out of here. We was gone. Like, we we was, he, Cash was bringing everybody, everybody that was a part of his campaign and put in work in his campaign, he was bringing them with him. That's dope. That's real stand up. What was his, like, what was his recording process, bro? Like, when... You know, he lock in for like how many hours and how many songs he gonna do within that time frame. Man, to be honest, we wouldn't even count the hours. We just we was just in here till we was done. And it was it was just man, it was a good time. You feel me? It was good a friendly competition to see who could push each other to do the most and how many songs we could get done and like shit like that. Like that's that shit I'll never get back. Like that's that time and that's time and, and, and like good memories, like. The last thing I got a cash from our last session this is the last thing I got from him. The bottle of Casamigo. We sat in here for five hours and drank this bottle. But we knocked out every one of the songs that he wanted done for his new tapes. Every one of them? How many? Man, there's shit. There's what? Two, three tapes coming out. So we, I got about a good 30, 40 in my computer, maybe. And that's not including the ones that we did at Rap A Lot. Damn, damn, and I, like once he like um, so before before rap a lot comes in, he already grabs this new sound right and this new flow right. Yeah. So when they come in, like, what was their process? Like, what changed? Man, low key, it was just it was just all friendly business. Like we, it was just all fa- like we move as a family. Like my my homie Ink Dog fuck with rap a lot. Like they down there. So Sean the Don, like all of us, we like a big. Like we we just a big family. When we in the studio, it ain't it ain't no how could I put it? It's not like what you're thinking making in the making the band. You feel me? Like when we in the studio, like it's all chill. Everybody everybody rapping with each other. Everybody chopping it up. Motherfuckers playing video games. Like it's like a family occasion, folks. So it's like when we all together, we not really thinking about business. We getting the shit done, and then later down the line, we calling each other. All right, cool. Let's do this now. Let's get this done. So we got this done, and then we go out and do this shit type shit. You feel me? Yeah, like, and like, like when they have events, because I remember like maybe a couple of weeks before FBG Cash passed, and you know RP FBG Cash, and um, before his passing, he had he was at the bowling alley with um Fredo Bain. Like, was that a rap a lot event? Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's all rap a lot. And you got to think about it, bro. Like. That's another thing that's blowing me. The internet want niggas to beef with each other so bad, right? They they want the, they want this motherfucking O Block 63rd shit to keep going, which it ain't gonna stop. We know that. But the internet wanna see it so bad that they gonna sit there and pinpoint, oh, well, motherfuckers was over here at bowling alleys with this person, so it's all clicked up to this. Like, man, when we doing business like any other business, bro, you're gonna go, you're gonna go walk into a business knowing that you have an opportunity to make yourself Make yourself a little bit better in life. You're gonna walk into that opportunity and fuck it all up over over a, a, a anger emotion, which you could later down the line. Let, all right, let me lock this in. We run into each other again. I'll t- now it's time to do what to do. Right now we checking the let, let's lock in this bag. We not kicking it with each other. Right, you don't right. See us buddy, buddy, motherfucker, shoulders and arms with each other. It's, no, I shot at you out. You was here. I'm in the building. Motherfucker, no, we was in the same building. Yeah, because he had left a comment on my page, though. He was like, uh, Fredo Bank had said that he didn't know that he was there or something like that, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what the, I, I wasn't out there for that. I wasn't out there for that, but come on, how you not going to know Cash there? Cash out there. Yeah, he's he, pretty close. He, he posting the shit. Yeah, no, no doubt. That, that, and it's um, not hard to miss Cash. Cash not a, Cash not a motherfucker that just blend in with everybody. No, no doubt, no doubt, bro. And um, since then, like, what artists you working with now, bro? Man, low key, I ain't working with nobody but Young, Young and oh, Dutch. You definitely okay. So you pushing for Young? Yeah, well, I'm still pushing with Young and Dutch. Oh, that's what's up, bro. That's what's up. What's up? That, like, do they have any uh project that's supposed to drop soon? Free the ops. 
Free the ops coming soon. Is it both of them on like it's combined effort it's, or it's, it's all it's all three of them, Cash Young and Dutch. Oh damn. Oh, that's gonna yeah. be hard. Yeah, and then um then we got and then Cash is gonna be having his album, I believe. Let's talk cash. That's gonna be dropping soon too. So, but there, there's a lot, there's a lot of shit that's still dropping. Cash, cash yeah, that's good that he music. had a gang of music. Like you saying that you, you got probably what you say three or four albums. Three oh yeah. Or four albums. Oh yeah, he got he got shit if not more. Did he shoot a lot of music videos too? Hey, man, that man, that man pushed me to drop five videos a week. So I'm sure he was knocking out five to seven videos a month. Yeah, see. That that right there, they gonna keep his name alive for sure, bro. Yeah. So then, then, you know, I just I just shot a video. I just dropped a snippet on my Instagram, um, letter to my dog, which is a tribute to Cash, to Cash and and, and FYB Trigger. And that one, like, that one, that one hits a whole that that should hit different. And what's the name of it again? Letter to my dogs. Oh no doubt, we definitely gotta get tap into that. Yeah, that that'll be dropping the full video drops July eighth. And uh, bro, before like I get you out, I just want to ask you too about the Tasha West lady. Like, have you heard about? I know the social media is pretty much. I don't know, like, what she got to do with anything. I just know social media is pretty much putting her name in it the same way they put your name in different. Man, y'all leave that girl alone, for Like, whoever was with Cat, like I said, you're not gonna know until you, until your family speaks on it. It goes into public. It's still an open case. Let let the police do their job, man. Y'all y'all putting people's lives in danger. Like the internet, real life, putting people in lives in danger with these crazy ass accusations. And you think that's like in general the drill culture, like coming like you coming from the drill culture, you seeing what's coming going from on. the drill culture. My my like my personal opinion. The media is feeding off everybody dying in Chicago. The media is feeding off all the shootings and the gang shit. Like, for example, I've been going back and forth with Durkey from O Block. A lot of people don't know I chased his shorties out the studio. I chased little little G Nook and and Jackson, whatever the fuck their name is. I chased them out the studio. Somebody today said, Bodine, you feel like you tough as hell because you a grown man chasing 15, 16 year olds out the studio. It's not that, because I got kids that age. At the end of the day, it's the fact that when you play these grown games and you walk into a studio not knowing who, who you around and you dissing dead motherfuckers that I beat with a family, I don't care how old you is, you got to know what come with this shit. But at the end of the day, that's not nobody else's fault but the artists in Chicago making that shit cool. Because while everybody encouraging these kids to do that gang shit music, when gang shit happens, always falls into the they was innocent, they just kids, and y'all wasn't talking like that when these kids are talking about how many bloods they smoking and how many dead people is in their blood. Will I ever do no harm to a child? Hell no. Like I said, I got kids that age. If I want if I want some kids beat up, I'm gonna call my daughter. My daughter be whooping motherfuckers for me if I if I really need to. But it's not that, it's the it, I, I'm trying to prove a point. Like, stop encouraging these kids to do dumb shit, and then when dumb shit happens, everybody want to point the fingers on what could have been changed, what could have been changed to stop encouraging the bullshit. Y'all see these kids out here fucking up, following the culture, folks, don't do this. Man, tell these kids do something else. Like, man, my kids want to tell me they want to do music. The first thing, I don't tell them, yeah, go ahead, do it. No, the first, why? For what? What do you think you're going to get from it? And that's thinking another it's thing. Like, you're thinking, you might as well just knock it off now because it's not none of what you think of. That's another thing, like far as you know, I, I said in some of my blogs sometime, like Jim Jones said a few years ago, he was like, Man, being a rapper is the most dangerous job in America right now. And a lot of people laughed at him and shit. I right? just I just said that on truth tellers. It, it's more dangerous to be a rapper than it is to be a motherfucking police. And the worst part about it is with this whole gang shit going on, they're making it harder for the videographers, the producers, the engineers. Like, unless you one of these little white kids with the glasses and none of that. Like, if you know all the white kids, they could go do all that shit. They could go work with OTF, motherfucker, this person, that person, this person, that person, this person. Right, right. But if it's black or brown, we playing both sides. We doing this. We backdoor this. We like... 
So the little white kids can do it, but the motherfuckers that's really trying to feed their family and do some have to have to forcibly pick a side and stick on that side, which I don't mind. I don't care. I like it on this side. But at the end of the day, as the creators, as the people that have to come through and do this shit, like, for example, Billy Cock, coldest, coldest motherfucking videographer that I know besides the shorties that, that are watching him that I know that are working with me, watching his style and learning from him. Billy could only work with certain people because he got because he got all the duck and cash and that, that shit behind him. So he can only he's only limited to work with certain people. As we got Dada, which mad love to Dada, I fuck with Dada Creative Heavy, and he's like these are two prime examples, and I and I love that I'm cool with both of them. Dada could go work with the GDs, the BDs, the foes, the Mo's, the Lord, all cool. Billy, on the other hand, because of how much work he's done with Duck and FBG, only limits him to certain areas because motherfuckers think he part of the same shit. When we just we're 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 here to provide a service. We're here to engineer and make your music sound good. We're here to make your motherfucking videos look good. We here to we we here to do that. We not here to we on this side. We on that side. It ain't never had to come to that. But it's now being pushed to the fact that people are forcibly forced to pick that side, especially yeah, no, if it's sure. black or brown. They even do it in even with the blog, and it, it start to. You know, like with the people that's doing interviews and shit. Oh, the bloggers know? are becoming worse than the rappers at this point with their beefs. Yeah. <laughs> yep, but like the bloggers, the same, it's the same type of situation where, you know, it's like, damn, if you do them, if you don't, you just can't. If he was if he was like white or some shit, like he's saying, they'll pretty much accept you working with different people. But when it comes to our people working with these people, it's like, oh, damn, you picking both sides. Yeah, oh, you, you, you trying to uh, like, slam no him out? You want to back to him? Disrespect no white people in no type of way because it's it's love how they could be able to do that shit. No, I that's, wish that's I true. could still be able to say, yeah. I my whole goal working with everybody, bro, is to be able to say I worked with every legend in my city from old to young. I managed to do that in a in, in some way, shape, or form. My resume goes real long, but as of the last two years. With the way this shit is going, you unfortunately got to pick a side. And it's dumb as hell. It, it's dumb as fuck. You think it's like like you been in, you know, you with the rapping, the uh, producing, engineering, you think it's any way that you can change that up? Like something that you could tell people maybe moving forward? I would, I, honestly, I'm, I, I'm in the process of like, I want to change the narrative, but at the end of the day, like, you got to just know what comes with this shit. You feel me? You gotta know what you gotta know what comes with shit when you attach your name to shit. Cause once you start attaching your name to shit, there's certain shit that like you don't know the whole history of certain shit. But you know them, you know you want to ride for your peoples at all costs, no matter what it is. And some that sometimes that shit gets taken out of proportion. And with the way Chicago moving, like, ain't no reason nobody should be dying over no music. Nah. Uh. For sure. Ain't no reason we've been doing rap battles this song since motherfucking East East Coast versus the West Coast since since back in the motherfucking since back in the backyard days people always been break dancing days people always been rap battling this song this new age of what these kids is doing for they made it dangerous now because we not only worried about grown men riding around acting fucking stupid we got to worry about these kids. Because it's the kids 15, 16 years old walking around with big ass pipes just trying to look cool for the net now. Yeah, that's true. It's a fact. And it, it's it's crazy. It shouldn't even come down to that. Like, motherfuckers want to make this song? Make this song. Let's play ball. But once you start feeling like your feelings getting hurt and you got to go shoot some shit, then oh, music may not be for y'all. Because a lot of y'all, the labels are looking at this like, man, there's so much money and all this depth and all this shit. Like they got all this. Let's keep let's keep putting the bread in behind that, not knowing that look, they want y'all to fuck up. Cause once that once you fuck up and you either die or or you locked up, somebody got to get that money back that they just paid you for and all this shit that they can't get now. You leave that shit on your family. Now your family not only got to pay for a funeral or to pay to get you out of jail, they got to pay for all the shit you just fucked up. Cause you want to be out here on some gang shit when you just came up on the bag. Oh, that's dropping some gems right there, bro. Facts. Let me ask you though, before we get up out of here, I want to know, like, um, 
you know, drill. Now it's New York. Now it's even in Florida. Um, you know, different parts of the United States. Also in um, the UK, you know, it's world, worldwide right now. And a lot of people say it originated in Chicago. So, like, you being an engineer and you having this sound, do people from out of town reach out to you more? To try oh, to yeah. Get that sound out there? Oh, yeah. And, and and rather people like to hear it or don't like to hear it, the genre of house music and drill music will forever be originated out of Chicago. You could put whatever names you want on the front, UK drill, New York drill, whatever type of drill you want. Motherfuckers that started that Florida drill, let's let let's let's now let, let's let's put this out there. Motherfuckers started singing on that making my way downtown and said that was drill. They that was the most dumbest shit I ever heard. That fully old shit that was the most goofiest shit I heard out. That's Florida drill. But at the end of the day, Chicago originated that shit. There wouldn't be no drill music. And if you really want to think about it, Chicago's been drill music before the drill music because before we had drill music in Chicago, we had gang banging music. Right, right. We we had the do or dies and the motherfucking snipers and we had the motherfucking crucial conflicts and they Lost always the been talking about gang affiliation. We DA Smart, mm -hmm. prime example. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> DA Smart. The song Walk With Me is a Walk song about every neighborhood and different mobs and that. We've been doing drill music since motherfucking music has been able to be recorded. That shit don't stop just because motherfuckers put their own sound to it. The problem with Chicago is, right, Chicago loves the fact that they can, that we got this dope-ass sound, we got this dope-ass way of doing music, but as soon as somebody a little bit bigger than us start showing us a little bit of love, and like, yeah, they start using it, they let a motherfucker run off with it. Mm. That's deep. That's what Chicago problem is. They love when a motherfucker, that's why all these drill rappers and all this Motherfuckers using our words and doing all that shit. You know why? Because there's the little Dirks and all of them that just like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you could just sound like me like this, man. Let's run it up. Now motherfucker gonna run it up and run it off on you. Yeah, because even like little Dirk, you know, he's he's been signed for quite a bit of time, but like far as like the success that he has now, this is like what 10 years, 10 years in the making to get there. So it wasn't even easy for him. When it came down to, you know, different people in the industry, he was around French Montana, like you said, like, you know, different people shit. Like, you hear, even now, I was listening to uh, Meek Mill's last album. His at last album, to me, sound like it's a Lil Durk album. You feel me? I don't listen to none of that shit. Yeah, Meek Mill, his shit sound just like, like, kind of like a Lil Durk album. But that's that's the problem, though. All these rappers is trying to sound like, Man, y'all just we we ain't trying to I ain't trying to hear a hundred motherfucking little dirt from different from different cities. That's why you know you know what states I give I give their props to Atlanta and LA. They stick to their roots and they sound and they don't they don't give a fuck what you gonna show them respect. Chicago, Chicago just likes niggas to be copycats. They like that copycat shit. That's why there's so many copycats out here. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you on that, bro. No, no doubt, cause it's like. Like I said, that that cash, the cat, what cash had going on, that, that sound, I never heard that shit before. But it's like, it's a whole bop. That shit, a whole vibe. So it's like, damn, it's crazy. Yeah, that's because man, my sound is. He was putting in that work, bro. He was putting in that work and got all that music already recorded and shit, man. That's dope as hell. Man, endless nights and early fucking mornings. I'll tell you that much. No, no doubt, bro. You anything you want to leave us with, bro? Because we definitely appreciate it, bro. You broke down that history for sure. Man, look, y'all, right now, go go subscribe to our YouTube channel, man. Bodie and BD Mix. I need y'all to go subscribe right now. I'm gonna drop this video, letter to my dogs, and a tribute to FEG Cash and FYB Trigger. I need y'all to go run up FEG Young's new album that he got out around here. It ain't it's kind of new, but I need y'all to go run up FEG Young's new album. And I need y'all to go run up FBG Young and FBG Dutchie's new motherfucking new video, Free the Ops. All my work on all of that. Like, all that shit you're going to see. And don't forget to run up FBG Cash's Crazy Lane video. Let's get that motherfucker to a mill. No, nah, no doubt, bro. I appreciate that, Boney. Uh, and let them know where they can follow you at one more time on the ground. Man, y'all can find me at Bo Bodine, B-O, capital D-E-N-E, -E, BD Mix at 
and IG. Like, I just had to start a new page, man. Shout out to motherfucking IG for clapping my page at 3K. So, oh, man, that's from... Back to the rebuild. Yeah, rebuild, but, you know, run it up, run it up, bro. Yeah, so I need y'all to make that. sure y'all go run it up. TikTok, y'all can find me on TikTok, Bodine, BCMG. At TikTok, y'all gonna find all the le- all the le- latest vlogs, video, video, motherfucking, um, all the video snippets, everything you want to look for, you're gonna find it all on there too. So I'm all over it. Your sound went off, G. Yeah, bro, no doubt. I appreciate it, bro. Anything y'all got dropping, like when y'all go on y'all pro, promo runs, bro, shit, definitely hit us up, bro. We would love to have you on the show, man. That goes, that we extend that to Young as well as Dutchie. All right, I appreciate that. Salute, bro. Peace. Peace.